want you to turn to Luke chapter 2. And then just stick your finger or a marker there and go to Proverbs chapter 1. And the preacher gives you two different texts for your, his uh, sermon text. You know it's going to be a long sermon. So, uh, once again, happy Father's Day. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, and to give subtly to the simple, the simple to the young man knowledge and description, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent not. Verse 15. My son, walk not thou in the way of, uh, with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. Let's turn over to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 and uh, verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you. You've allowed us to be here today. We do uh, thank you that you allowed us to be here to honor you, our Father. Let our hearts be directed at you at this time. Let us see from the preaching of your word the things you would have us to know, that you would draw us closer to you, draw us closer to Jesus, and perhaps even have someone come to trust him as Savior this very day. Forgive me of my sins and enable me to preach the sermon that you would have preached. Just guide and direct. And we turn all those things over to you. We ask today if there's one of your people here that has a need, that you would fill that need. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name, that you might receive the honor and the praise and the glory. Amen. Amen. I'd like to preach this morning on Jesus the wise son. The wise son. Solomon wrote this book of Proverbs, and uh, most of it uh, was, was written by Solomon, collected by Solomon. And the Proverbs are not a book of the law. They are a, 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 it's not even necessarily a book of promises. It is a, a book of general principles to give us wisdom that we would have greater understanding, that we would live by these, these principles that we might have wisdom. He wrote this here. He collected these proverbs, and, and many of those I'm sure he wrote himself, to give to his son. Solomon was the king. He was passing on this information to his son, the future king, that he might lead the people with wisdom. That he might uh, um, be a great ruler. We see in this, the, this picture that, that Solomon gives us as he is giving wisdom to his son. We can also understand that God our Father, and specifically the Father of our Lord Jesus, gave Him, 
gave him this great wisdom. Jesus who fulfilled the law. Jesus who lived up to each and every word in this book. Throughout the books of the law, throughout the, the, the Proverbs, throughout everything that was given, Jesus fulfilled every jot and tittle. Jesus, we see pictured here in the wise son that Solomon spoke to. Now let us look first at what the father gave his son. The father gave his son his wisdom. And we as, as fathers, the, the, the greatest thing that we can give our children is wisdom. And he says here, the beginning, the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. That's the first thing that we should teach our children. The fear of the Lord. The wisdom to know that God is God and God is all-powerful and, and, and the wisdom that we could, uh, they could look upon themselves and see their need for God. Trust in the Lord and lean not on their own understanding. Jesus said, and, and I, I'm sure I've preached this on Father's Day's past, He told the people back in the days when He was walking the earth, that you being evil, know how to, you fathers that are evil, know how to give your children good gifts, even so much more will our Heavenly Father give us. The Father imparted His wisdom. To his child. If we read verses 2 through 4, and we'll, we'll, we'll break these down into verses, verse 2 said that he was giving him wisdom for training. It says to know wisdom and instruction and to perceive the words of understanding. Now, Jesus being God and being man, it's kind of uh, hard sometimes for at least me to fathom. I know um, uh, many of you out there are a lot smarter than this guy, but um, just where exactly Jesus began to get the understanding of who he was and what his purpose was. Was it at conception? Was it at birth? When, uh, um we see them amazed in Luke chapter 2, which we'll look at here in a little bit, that they found him at the age of 12, and he was there, and he was uh, uh, questioning and, and answering uh, there with the doctors in the temple. We see later on in his uh, baptism how he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So we don't know exactly what he knew, when he knew it, how soon he knew it, if he knew it, like I said, from, from the, the minute of conception, if he partially knew. Uh, but we do read that he grew in wisdom as any child would grow. As we are, are, are uh, as, as earthly parents, Pass down our wisdom for training. God trained up his son. God trained up his son. And like I said, I don't understand it because I know Jesus was God from eternity past. I don't have to understand everything in the Bible. I just believe it's true. He gave him wisdom for training. He gave him wisdom for trying. Says to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. Solomon knew that his son one day would sit upon the throne and he would be judging his people. Now, I don't mean trying like Jesus tried. Jesus never tried to do anything. Jesus did everything that was set before him. 
Jesus accomplished everything that God, his Father, had set out for him to do. When I'm using the word trying, I mean putting people on trial, that he, that he was giving judgment. This future king that Solomon was writing to, Rehoboam, was that he would have the wisdom to judge his people. Isn't that what Solomon himself asked for? God said, I'll give you anything you want. Solomon said, I want wisdom to judge the people. God said, you, that, you made a good choice. I'm going to give you all these other things too. Christ will judge his people. Judge will, Christ will judge the lost and Christ will judge his people as well. On the merit of our works, on rewards given and unfortunately for rewards lost. Christ has all wisdom and in judgment. When we stand before him, we will not be able to say, you judge me wrongly. You judge me unrighteously. You don't understand. Christ has all wisdom. And he imparted the wisdom to give subtly to the simple and to the young man knowledge and for discretion. That was for teaching. There's no greater teacher than Jesus. And we have no greater teacher than his Holy Spirit that is inside of us. I believe it was James says that if any of you lack wisdom, ask of the Holy Spirit who giveth liberally. Christ came and, and demonstrated how we should live. In fulfilling the law, you know, uh, Paul said that the law was, was given to us as our schoolmaster. Not that we could fulfill the law, not that we could keep the law, but that we would see how far from keeping the law we are. And when Jesus came and fulfilled the law, we see that in him. How far we are from his perfection, from his righteousness. And the only hope that we have of heaven is to have his righteousness imputed upon us. The father gave his son also some things to keep. Verse 8. My son, hear the, the instruction of my father and forsake not the law of thy mother. The king said to his son, the father said to his son, keep the law. Keep the law. Now we've already said Jesus kept the law. Some of us might think we keep the law. We're pretty good people. Jesus fulfilled all the law. Now, in keeping the law, that means that we are to do everything the law tells us to do. Sometimes we're pretty good at thou shalt nots and abstaining from some things. I think we're pretty good people because we, do all the, we, we don't do the things that we're not supposed to do. I think the big stumbling block for most of us is the things that we are supposed to do that we don't do. I was listening to uh, Vadi Bauchin uh, last night and this morning. And he said, you can either say amen or ouch there. He told his son to keep the law. Now he was the king. But the king was still subject to the law. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. But he is still subject to God's law and he kept it. The keeping from law, the keeping from sin. Verse um, 
10. Says, my son of sinners entice thee, consent thou not. When people try to entice you to do something you shouldn't do. Yeah, I think the first thing that, that I mentioned, it uh, talks about sins of omission. This is sins of commission. These are the things that people try to get us to do that we shouldn't do. Jesus was the prime example of that. He was led out by the Spirit into the wilderness. And the devil tempted him three times. And Jesus, rather than commit the sins that the devil tried to entice him to do, tried to tempt him with the things of the world. Christ came back and quoted scripture. So we should keep the law and by doing what we should do. We should keep from sin by not doing what we shouldn't do. And then verse 15. My son, walk not thou in, in the way with them. Refrain by foot from their path. We should also keep the path. I'm calling this sins of remission. In other words, walking off the path. Remember Jeremiah told, his, told, his, uh, 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 told the people there that they should seek the old paths? And the people said, we will not walk in them. God has given us a path to walk upon. God has given us a mission to perform. You know, we talk so much about the Great Commission. I wish we did the Great Commission as much as we talked about it. Jesus kept the path. Jesus stayed on the path that, the, that, that His Father had given Him. He came. He was baptized. He, he lived a sinless life. He preached the Gospel. He taught to the poor and those that uh, could not, could not come to Him. Died upon the cross, was buried and rose the third day. Wisdom tells us to stay on the path, to continue on. And to stay on the path, that doesn't mean stand on the path. We are to proceed. We are to go forward. We see what the Father gave. Let's see what the Son did. Let's turn over to Luke. Luke chapter 2. Now we read what verses uh, 42 and, and uh, 40 and 52. Let's read verse 49. Now you probably all have heard the story, read the story. Uh, there was a feast there in Jerusalem. His family went into Jerusalem to keep the feast. Uh, there was a big party of them that went, and uh, um, they go they go away. About three days later, they realize that Jesus isn't with them, and they're heading back home. It's sort of like if you took your family to Myrtle Beach, and all of a sudden, after three days, you realize Audrey's not there. When you get home. So they realized and they, 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 they trace their steps back and they end up in the temple and there is Jesus and he's there with the doctors of the religion. And it says that, that he's asking, he's, he's hearing, and, uh, hearing them and asking them questions. Now I believe that, that him asking them questions is sort of like when he asked his, the disciples questions. It wasn't that he didn't know the answers. One of my teachers told me one time the reason why Jesus always asked the question before the lesson was to let them know they didn't have the answer. So I believe when he was asking questions, he wasn't necessarily getting knowledge from them, but he was asking them, well, why is this? And then he, when they would answer, he'd say, what's well, because of this? But he said here in verse 49, 
when they finally found him and they said, you know, why did you do this? We've been worried sick, put in the common day language. He said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? What the son did was he pleased the father at the outset. Now many of us didn't please the father at the outset, did we? Matter of fact, none of us did. For all of sin to come short of the glory of God. You ever hear that one? But Jesus, from the very beginning, followed the path that the Father sent. He pleased his Father. He went about his business understanding that the Father's business was to have a perfect sacrifice. Now, I understand we are to please our earthly parents. But the most important thing is to please our Heavenly Father. Yeah, they were worried. Yeah, they were concerned. But Jesus was following the Father at a young age. Young people, follow Him at a young age. The only thing that you will have if you wait till late, you know, I, I've heard people say, you know, I, I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to do this and then later on I will follow the Lord. The only thing you will have from that decision is regrets later on. And don't assume you're just going to all of a sudden love the Lord when you didn't love Him in your either. Jesus pleased his father at the outset. Jesus pleased his father in obedience. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Verses 13 through 17. And when Jesus, then Jesus, rather, then cometh Jesus, I'll get it right, from Galilee to Jordan, unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And he suffered him. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Now let me... Let me uh, before I get back into the sermon, let me give you a teaching moment here. Here we see in this passage the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all together. John chapter 1 says there are three that testify in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Anyone who tells you there is no Trinity does not know their Bible. They're lying. They're in error. Christ pleased the Father in his obedience. Christ went to the man that God had authorized to baptize. And, and John himself said, you should be baptizing me. You're greater than me. John, as good as he was, was still a sinner, needing the grace of God. But Jesus was perfect in all aspects. And John said, you should be baptizing me. But, but he said, no. We do this to fulfill righteousness. This is what God, this was God's plan. This is the man that God authorized to baptize. As a matter of fact, we read later on in the scriptures that said Jesus baptized none of them. Jesus, you know, his disciples baptized. Jesus never baptized. We see his obedience at the Jordan as he submitted to scriptural baptism as he submitted to the will of the Father that he was uh, going out and beginning his ministry. 
We see his obedience, not only at the Jordan, but in and out of Judea, everywhere he went. The scriptures in Acts tells us he went around doing good. He had preached the acceptable year of the Lord as Isaiah prophesied that he would. Not just in Judea, but he went into to, to, to Samaria and, and outside the region to tell others. To show others the salvation of God. Some of the hard shells out there said, well, it's not necessary to preach the gospel because uh, the, the, the elect are going to be saved. Jesus thought it was necessary. He preached everywhere he went. All the writers of the Bible, uh, uh, Peter and, and Paul and, and John, they all believed in preaching the gospel. Jesus was obedient to preach the gospel and to do the work of his Father everywhere he went. He was obedient to the Father at the judgments. The judgments he 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 went after uh, through trials where men can get this in your head. Filthy, unrighteous men judged and accused Christ. Christ could have walked away at any point when they came to arrest him. The officers, uh, the, the, the guardsmen that came. And his, his mere speaking fell on their backs. He could have called legions of angels down. He said to his father, If it were possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Through all those unfair trials, Jesus was obedient to his Father. When those that were unworthy, the unworthy sinners, nailed him to a cross, scourged him beforehand, mocked him, spit upon him as he walked the Via Della Rosa to the way, all the way to Calvary, bearing that cross. He pleased in his, his father in obedience to the unfair trials and the unworthy servants and the unforgiving cross. You know, we often, and talk, and I don't have a problem with this, and it didn't occur to me to just this morning. We, we, we look at the cross, and we think of that as a sign of forgiveness. It's actually a sign that God does not forgive sin, does it not? Someone had to pay for that sin. We don't just say, oh, oh God, we're sorry, and God says, oh, that's all right. Someone had to pay for that sin. It's a sign of the judgment of God. It's a sign of the love of Christ had that he died for us. He was obedient even under the death of the cross, Paul said in Philippians 2.8. Being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But you know what didn't end there? Due to that obedience, not only am I forgiven, it says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, because he was obedient and pleased God in the death of the cross. He pleased God with his outreach. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12.
verses 17 through 21. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom I am, my, my soul is well pleased, and I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory in his name, and in his name the Gentiles shall trust. I talked about how he was obedient to his father and he went not only into Judea but he went to surrounding regions. But with his death on the cross his atonement went forth not just to Judea not just to surrounding regions but to people everywhere. To people everywhere. People in Girdler, Kentucky, Knox County, Kentucky, Southeastern Kentucky, the state of Kentucky, the United States. So fulfilling was his atonement. People everywhere. Upon hearing the gospel, And trust him. He, he pleased the Father as an only begotten Son in Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. There upon the Mount of Transfiguration, now, now uh, uh, Jesus took Peter and James and John and they went up on a high mountain, it says, and it was transfigured. In other words, his, his true form was shown. His face is shine as the sun, and his, his raiment, his clothing were, were white as light. And behold, there appeared with him Moses and Elias talking with him. Peter said, let's build three tabernacles. He was overwhelmed by the sight. Peter should have known better. We say things all the time. We should we, we, we know we think things we know better. Peter should have known better. He wanted to build three tabernacles. Here's what God said. And while he yet spake, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Moses was a great man, was he not? Elijah was a great man. The apostles were great men. We've all known people in our past that were great men. We're celebrating Father's Day. Most of us think our fathers were great men. But Jesus is it, or God said, this is my son. Listen to him. He is the only son. He is the only one, in other words, worthy of your praise. We, um, once again, we know it's Father's Day. One of my cousins uh, posted that uh, the, the man who's on our prayer list has just had the, the, the surgery. He's recovering. She had, she had posted my... Uh, a picture of him and she said that he would never allow them to call her father because he said we have they had to call him dad because he said we only have one father and the father has one begotten son he's the one who is worthy of our praise and he pleased his father in his offering Isaiah 53 
funny how many sermons end up in Isaiah 53, isn't it? I read a book months ago talking about the greatest chapter in the Bible. And it was all about Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 in verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put on him, put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his soul and shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He pleased the Father as an offering. Jesus Christ was not just dying on the cross as an ordinary man, an ordinary criminal. He was the perfect. He was the spotless, without blemish, Lamb of God. He offered himself up for an atonement, for a payment, for our sins. God was pleased with that offering. God looked upon that offering. Remember Cain and Abel, they both had offerings. He, God was pleased with one and was not pleased with the other. God is not pleased with your offering made with, with filthy hands and, 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 and unrighteousness. The only offering that will please God is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. The only way you can be accepted you can be saved is through that offering. Rejecting anything that you can do and trusting in Him. That is the only thing that God is pleased in. Would you trust Him today? Why don't you all stand? Uh, take your songbooks, turn them to 168. <laughs>